Come on, what's up, fam? Y'all excited for church on a Sunday morning? If you're excited to be in the house, make some noise. Let's welcome our online family one more time. They're watching. Hey, come on, y'all. Y'all are almost to that 500 mark. I think that's pretty cool. That's a cool, cool little milestone in the life of our church. Uh, but if you're watching this years, if, if it's 2025 right now, welcome to Trove Heights Online. Uh, so glad that you're in the house with us today. Uh, if we've not met, my name is Kevin, along with my wife, Megan. We are the pastors here at Trove Heights uh, Young Church. We're actually coming up on two years as a church, y'all. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, we'll have a, uh, we'll a two-year anniversary service on August 27th. Go ahead and mark that on your calendars. If you watch online and you've been around for any amount of time, maybe you're in Nashville or you're nearby, show up on that day. I promise you it's gonna be an experience that we will not forget. We're gonna celebrate all that God has done in the first two years of our church. Get ready for year three and beyond because I'm telling y'all what's ahead is exciting. I'm just telling you, we got some exciting stuff coming down the line we're gonna um, be filling you in on. But before we talk about anything else today, and before I get into the message, I wanna take an opportunity to shout out Serve Day 2023. That was yesterday. Bunch of you showed up and served so far. We've had three serve days as a church. It was by far our biggest to date. We had three projects. We got to do a bunch of work out in the community here at the school. Hey, when y'all go to the restroom today, you're gonna see how pretty them restrooms look. Shout out to the team for that. We just came in here beautified. Got to meet some uh, first responders and bless them and bless some people doing laundry over in Antioch. It was just a great, great day. Partnered with over 1,100 other churches around America to do the same thing on the same day. God got a lot of glory yesterday, y'all. I'm telling you, he did. And uh, I just want, I'll just let you check it out. How about that? Let's roll that video and check out what you did yesterday on Serve Day. Hey, come on, let's give it up for all of y'all who were at Serve Day. Thank you for being a part of it. Uh, if you were not here and you're a part of giving here at Trove Heights financially, man, you played a part in making all that happen yesterday. Uh, we made a bigger impact than we'll ever know, and some of it we'll never know till the other side, side of eternity. But I'm telling you, God got glory yesterday, and it's cool that we got to partner with so many other churches to do all of that. Uh, I don't know if y'all saw, your boy was in there whipping around a paintbrush. Boy can do some paint now. I, I had a good time. And uh, we still got some painting to finish. So a little plug here, Saturday, August 5th, we will come back here and we'll do a Saturday serve to kick off the month of August because that was the kickoff of us really rolling out some often serve days that we're gonna be doing. So we'll tell you more about that over the next couple of weeks if you'd like to be a part of that. Jump in. If you weren't here, I'm just telling you, get to the next one because it'll bless you more than I promise it'll bless the people that you're, you're serving. The Bible says that God refreshes those who refresh others. And so we made an impact together yesterday. I thought it was awesome. I'm so excited about what God is doing in our church. And uh, today we're gonna continue right on with our Faith Wheel series, man. I'm excited for this message today. Let me just tell you, today's message is gonna impact us in a powerful way. Watching online, I believe this is a message that is gonna mark us. It has marked me this week. And as I was over here off in the side room before the service started, God hit me with even some deeper stuff. I'm just telling you, today's gonna be a good day. I want you to buckle your seatbelt, get ready, take some notes, lean in, because I believe that today will change your life if you let it. How many of y'all came in church today expecting God to move? That's what, that's what we're here for. We believe that our expectation will determine our experience here at Trove Heights. And so I wanna ask you to lean in with me. Shout out to Jared on the keys. He did a great job. Trove Heights worship. Let's, uh, let's lean into this thing. If you're taking notes, 
uh, go ahead and get ready for this message today. We're gonna be in Mark chapter four, and then in Acts chapter 27. We're gonna look at two places in scripture today uh, that I'll kind of take us on a journey on. Uh, but the title of my message today is Stay on the Ship. Stay on the Ship. And uh, we'll, break with, we'll, we'll break down what that means here in just a moment. But faith is a foundational piece of Christianity. We've been in this Faith Will series now. It's like part seven or something. I don't even know what part we're in. I just know that God told me we need to continue in this thing after the month of June. Uh, by the way, so many of us were out in the month of June. So I was like, all right, we got to give, give them some faith in the month of July. Everybody's coming back. And it's exciting to see what God's doing in our church. Y'all, our church is growing. If you have not seen that or noticed it, the diversity is growing. The size is growing. Everything in our church is growing. Kids is growing. I think it's amazing what God is doing. Man, let's give it up for Jesus for what he's doing in our church. That's amazing. I love what God is doing, but faith is a foundational piece of this journey. And uh, if you show up to Trove Heights, I mean, we love that you're in the room and like wanna come be a part of it here and there, but our goal is for your faith to grow. If your faith is not growing, then I'm not doing my job. But it's hard for me to do my job when I can't speak directly into somebody's life on a weekly basis. That's why it's important to get in church and because scripture says those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish. Our goal is that you flourish. And I know as your faith grows, you will flourish. We've had a lot of great messages over the last six, seven weeks. We've had some incredible communicators on our team bring the word. It's been a fun season. But one of the reasons faith is so important is because of what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about storms today. And every one of us are gonna be affected by a storm. You might be in the middle of a storm right now. You've probably heard it said before that all of us are in one of three places. We're either coming into a storm, we're in the middle of one, or we just came out of one. All of us are in one place or another. When you talk about storms, in our lives. And really, if you want to have some faith, then, then you're going to have to have some strength in the middle of a storm. Because it's easy to have faith when everything is going good in your life. That's easy. Anybody can do that. It's hard to have faith in the middle of a storm. You see this with athletes, with celebrities, right? You see people and they, they win an award and they get on TV and they say, man, I just want to give God thanks for this award I got today. And you're like, I had no idea that person was a Christian. Secret service Christian just rolled up out like, look at me. But anybody can do that when you win an award, when you get a bonus at work, you get a promotion. When everything's good, that's easy to do. How can we have faith in the middle of a storm? Because again, you're gonna experience a storm if you haven't yet over the last month. Can't you be more positive, pastor? I'm positive you're gonna have a storm. All of us are gonna face a storm at one point in time. It's gonna happen. Maybe you've walked in here today and you're in the middle of a storm. I believe that today is gonna impact you in a a powerful way. We're gonna look at Mark chapter four to kind of set the stage for where I wanna go today. And then we're gonna dig into Acts 27 to really figure out how this can apply to our lives and how we can have faith in the middle of a storm. Because you gotta know that just because you put faith in God does not mean that storms won't come. Storms will come regardless. We see this in Mark chapter four. Let's look at verse 35 and uh, we'll read through verse 41. It says, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Jesus, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him and a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. There's a big deal, big storm here. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. Man, I'm t- whatever we're worried about, God's just sleeping, y'all. He's just sleeping. He's got it under control. He's sleeping. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. And then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He then turned and looked and said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and they asked each other, who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? I think this is interesting because if you read in, if you read here in Mark chapter four, through Mark one into Mark four in the story, Jesus does seven different miracles on seven different instances with seven different people in the middle of a storm. We, we see a man who had a shriveled hand and Jesus said, stretch out your hand and his hand was restored. We see a man lowered through the roof by four of his friends so that he could be healed by Jesus because he, he was a paralyzed man. We see, we see the, bl- the blind begin to see. We see these incredible miracles of people that are dealing with storms, most of them that have been dealing with storms their entire life. Not like even a storm that they came up on. They've been in this storm their whole life. And then we get to this point where they're on the boat. So basically, if you go read Mark chapter four, leading up to verse 35, they're at church just like this. 
Jesus is preaching. He's teaching. They're in church. The disciples are sitting there. He's giving a sermon. People are getting fired up about what God is doing. Oh, God's better. He's greater faith, strengthening their faith. And then Jesus is like, all right, church is over. Y'all, let's go to the other side of the lake. Let's go to the other side of the sea. And they get in the boat. And the point I want to tell you out of that is today you're sitting in church and this week you will go into a storm at some point. It's going to happen. I don't know what that storm looks like for you. Maybe it's financial. Maybe it's relational, physical, maybe something on your job. I have no idea what kind of storm you will face this week. You might face the storm of Monday morning traffic on the way to work. You will face a storm of some kind. There's storms that are going to come. Have you ever been caught by a storm? I've had moments in my life. We grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. This is like tornado alley, okay? Tornadoes roll through there every spring in Alabama. Like, this is what we know. We've always known it. You hear a tornado siren, like you do your thing, you get in your safe place. Like, you gotta get ready. They just rip through Birmingham. It's happened since I was a kid. And, and I, I remember going to Houston and we moved there in 2016 to be a part of a great church. And I remember thinking, man, we're, we're getting away from tornadoes. This is awesome. This is getting away from tornadoes. We had been there for maybe two months. And there was one morning at about 4.35 in the morning. I mean, I'm dead asleep. Like I sleep like, I sleep like a rock. Like I don't know about y'all, I sleep like a rock. I can sleep through anything. In the past, there would be times tornadoes coming right at us and she'd have to wake me up. But this morning, this one morning, the, 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 the one thing that wakes anybody and everybody up is the Amber Alert sound on your phone. You know what I'm talking about? Like you will not sleep through that. You going to get up. And I remember my phone starts going off and I, I, I wake up and I'm like, what in the world? And she comes running in there. She's like, oh my God, it's a, there's a tornado. I'm like, no, no, no. There's an Amber alert. Go back to bed. She's like, no, there's a tornado. I'm like, what? So I look at my phone, tornado warning. I'm like, wait a second. They told me there was no tornadoes in Houston. What's happening right now? And I get up and I go into the TV. It's dark outside. It's raining. There's wind. We're watching the news, meteorologist is on. And I don't know about y'all, but in, in Birmingham growing up, you knew it was getting real when you turned on the news and the weatherman had the sleeves rolled up like me and the jacket off suspenders on. It was getting real, like it's getting crazy. Okay, so if there's a tornado coming, I'm gonna turn James Spann, sleeves rolled up, coat off, you better lock in, okay? Now this morning in Houston, Texas, it was not like that. Tornado warning, that means somebody spotted a tornado, it's on the ground, they saw it. Not a watch, a warning. <laughs> I'm, I'm so like immune to the tornadoes growing up. They'd be like a tornado watch. I'm like, ain't nobody seen one yet, it ain't real. She's like, it's a watch, it could happen. I'm like, no, it's not a warning. And so anyway, this morning is a tornado. We're, we're, we're watching the news. I'm like, a tornado warning, where's it at? They're not, they're not giving us nothing. In Alabama, even in Tennessee, y'all know, they, they drill down to, hey, so-and-so road in three minutes. It's gonna be on top of you. Get in your, you know, they'll tell you where it's at. This one was like, there's a tornado warning. We'll be back right after these messages. I'm like, whoa, wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm going outside. I'm like, is it, where's it at? How are we supposed to know where it's at? They just come back from a commercial break. They're like, all right, the tornado warning is over, everybody. We're like, did it hit somebody? We don't even know what just happened. But it came up out of nowhere. I was not prepared for it because I thought that storms don't happen in the vicinity of where I was in my life. And we see this in our faith. We start following Jesus and we expect that everything's gonna be butterflies and roses and no more storms because I follow Jesus. But with Jesus, you will notice the storms maybe more than you don't when you don't follow Jesus. You will experience the storms. They are gonna come. Storms are a part of life. When you sign up for a journey, you sign up for the possibility of a storm. You can't be like, you know what? I'm gonna fly out. Next week, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go down to Florida, I'm gonna go live it up. But but you get on the airplane, hey pilot, I need you to know I don't do turbulence. I don't do clouds. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. When I'm taking off and I'm going through the clouds, I'm like, Lord Jesus, right now, help us get through the, the clouds will get you, man. The, you, you can't be like, no, I don't, I'm not signing up for the turbulence. No, it's a part of the you sign up for a journey, you sign up for the possibility of a storm. And when you sign up for a life with Jesus, you sign up for the possibilities of lots of storms. We have, this, uh, we have this misnomer in America today that we believe that if we start following Jesus, no more storms. But this story is evidence that even if Jesus is in your boat, a storm will come. Because, because God did not say, hey, if you, if, you follow, if you follow my son Jesus, no more storms. He said, matter of fact, in this world, you got me and some trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the storm. I've overcome the trouble. That was the promise. So you see these guys, they're in this boat and all Jesus said was, I need, let's go to the other side. They just had Sunday service. It was amazing. People were falling out on the floor. People, guys, it was amazing. Church happened and a storm. But what did Jesus 
tell you. And I wanna help you be able to dig into that today with your faith. The difference in this particular story, they just watched seven miracles with people who were in storms. So they should be like, man, I know, okay, it's cool, storm coming, we're gonna be good. The problem and the difference with this is this was their storm. Because anybody can encourage someone else in a storm. But what do you do when you are in a storm? Our faith will determine what we do and storms are impartial to your level of faith. Guess what? I'm a pastor, I seek Jesus every day and I still have storms. The difference is, what do I do with the storms? Now, five years ago, I've been following Jesus for 10 years now, five years ago, six years ago, eight years ago, I handled storms way differently than I handle storms today. The, the, the difference is not that there's less storms, the difference is I know how to stay put in the middle of a storm. Your trust grows in storms, faith, will cause you to do some things in storms. It'll cause you to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It'll cause you to see the hope in the storm. Faith will, faith will do those things if you have it. But if you have no faith, you're gonna be looking for a way out. I think a lot of us are in storms in life or we're coming up in storms. We've been in storms and we want to escape. God wants, we're, we're praying, God help us escape and God wants us to experience. We wanna get out and God wants us to go through. Because I want you to know this today, God gets glory through you getting through your storm. God will get glory through you getting through your storm. God gets no glory if we bail out in the middle of the storm. I want God to be able to get glory out of my life. Faith, I wrote down an acronym. I was sitting by the pool the other day and God was just, man, something happens by the pool. The Spirit of the Lord speaks to me, okay? I was sitting by the pool and I was going through that. I had my notes out and I was thinking about faith, acronym. You probably heard forwarding all issues to heaven. I've heard that acronym. Before. And I came up with my own acronym. It's gonna help you today, okay? Faith in storms is focused and intent to hang on. Focused and intent to hang on. The disciples equated a storm, and this is what too many of us do too many times. The disciples equated a storm with Jesus in their boat doing nothing as Jesus doesn't care about them. And this is exactly how they roll up. Do, teacher, do you not care that we're gonna drown? Jesus gets up and he immediately speaks to the storm and then speaks to them because Jesus will never speak to your storm without speaking to you. Jesus will never deal with your storm without also dealing with you. Because we want God to deal with all the stuff out there. And God's like, I'm trying to deal with everything in here. This is exactly what you see happen. He commands the wind and the waves, and then he questions the disciples. Now, here, here's the, another translation says it this way. He says to them, how is it that you still have no faith? How is that? You saw me heal the paralyzed man. You saw me heal the blind man. You saw the guy come through the roof. You were right there. You saw the man stretch out his hand, and it came back. How is it that you still have no faith because they were in the middle of a storm. They came to Jesus the wrong way and the way you come to Jesus will determine how he responds to you. They came to Jesus saying, teacher, do you not care that we're gonna drown? They were calling him teacher when what they needed was a savior. They were calling him teacher when what they need was a protector. Teacher, do you not care that we're gonna drown? And Jesus gets up and speaks to the wind and the waves before he ever addresses these dudes over here. Why, why do you think he turned to them and said, how is it that you still have no faith? Well, he ran, they ran to Jesus. They came to Jesus. Isn't that faith? How you come to Jesus might be more important than just coming to Jesus. Because a lot of us can come to Jesus and ask for the things that we need. We seek his hand, but we don't seek his face. And if you seek his hand without seeking his face, chances are you're not gonna get anything from his hand. Because he wants to have your heart more than anything else. It's like when I step up here on a Sunday morning, I was talking to a friend, Guy Moffley. He watches in Arkansas every week, Trove Heights Online. Love you, Guy. We're talking yesterday. He said, man, I don't know what's happening in your church. You're sharing the growth with me. He said, but man, every week I'm seeing it in your preaching. It's like something's changed. I said, man, I, honestly, I have been at the feet of Jesus more in my life in the past three, four months than I have been my whole life. And he said, well, it's evident. And this is what God told me to tell you today is don't try to serve Jesus before you seek Jesus. Because if you try to serve Jesus without seeking Jesus, Jesus doesn't need you to do anything for him. He can accomplish it without us. But he needs us to seek him because we gotta be dependent on him every day of our lives. And I think Jesus, the reason he said, how is it that you have no faith? This is why I think he said it. Because they came to him crying about, we're gonna drown and die. And Jesus says, I don't think he said, how is it that you still have no faith? Because they came frantic. It's a storm, tornadoes, I'd be frantic. I'm, I'm frantic, what's going on, what's happening? They came to him expecting to drown rather than expecting to go to the other side, which, was, which is what he told them they were gonna do. He said, the last thing he said was, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. Jesus, we're gonna drown, we're gonna die. And he's like, how is it 
that you still have no faith. I told you we're going to the other side. I'm in the boat with you. And I want you to know today that Jesus did not send you into the middle of the sea to drown. If Jesus got in your boat, he will get you to the other side of wherever he's calling you to go. He, he will, he's gonna get you there. How is it that you have no faith? I think how we look at God determines the faith that we have. And in storms, you have to put the focus in the right place. How do we do this? How do we keep and have faith in the middle of a storm? In order to look at this on a level that is someone that does not have Jesus in their boat, let's, let's look at Acts 27. And we're gonna look at something that Paul goes through in the New Testament, he's a, he's a prisoner on a ship with 276 other men. He's been imprisoned for preaching the gospel and they're getting ready to go on a journey in the middle of winter across the sea. And there's a big storm that comes up out of nowhere. Again, storms are impartial to your level of faith. They will come. St storms just come as part of life. We fight. It's easy to read a story like that and go, well, Jesus was in the boat, wind and waves be still, but Jesus is not in this boat. Let's look at this and see how it can apply to our lives today. We're gonna to start in verse 13. It says, when a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity, the sailors, the captain of the ship. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island and the ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it and we were driven along. Fast forward to verse 20. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. I don't know what kind of place you're in today or what kind of storm you've been dealing with. I know I, we're dealing with storms and, and here's the deal. A storm can look different for you and different for the next person. It, it could be something that's not like life threatening, but it's still something like, how are we going to do this, God? How are we going to, I don't see what I'm believing for God. How is it going to happen? And God's like, I just need you to remember one thing. Point one today is remember God is in control. If you don't get this right, you will not get the rest of it right. A storm is coming. Who is in control in the middle of a storm? And I want you to know today that Jesus in control in a storm is a lot better than you in control without a storm. I, I, I can make it a lot further with Jesus in my storm than I can without Jesus and no storm. I can get to the other side because I don't know about y'all, but have you ever been in a, in a, you get in a boat, you go through the woods, you can't see the other side. You're all by yourself. You're like, I got this. You don't know where you're going to end up, but God will take you exactly to where he told you he was going to take you. If you trust him and follow him, you got to remember God is in control. They gave up all hope of being lost. I, I don't know what you're facing in your life. Maybe you really are in a place today where there's no hope. You're watching online, you're not in the room because you got a diagnosis and you are afraid that life is shortened. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe financially you're in a place where you walked in here today, you're like, I don't know how I'm gonna pay my rent. I don't know how I'm gonna eat. I don't know what's gonna happen. I just want you to know today that God is in control. And when God is in control, nothing is out of control. When you are in control, everything can be out of control. And even though everything feels like it's out of control, as long as Jesus is in your boat, you will get to the other side. But you gotta go to him the right way. If you look at verse 22, Paul goes on right after it says, we gave up all hope of being lost. You need a Paul in your boat, everybody. You need somebody in your boat that can step up and encourage you when you have no hope, when you're hopeless. He says this to him, but now I urge you to keep up your courage, men, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. The enemy can take your ship, but he can't take you if you're in God's hands. The enemy can destroy your ship, but he cannot destroy you. He will come to steal and kill and destroy. But if you're in God's hands, he can't take from God, everybody. You give it to God, he's in control. It says, last night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve came and stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. Aren't you grateful that you have people in your life that just because they're praying for you, God will take you with them? Isn't that amazing? He says, so keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. You, I, I wanna tell you today, if you're facing a storm, don't worry, don't panic. Like man's panic does not produce God's power. Prayer produces God's power. If I panic more times than not, it's because I'm running away from prayer. And when I don't know what to do, I'm gonna do what I know to do and I'm gonna go to the feet of Jesus. 
because I don't know how to handle this storm. This storm is too big for me. I can't control it. But God is in your boat today and he wants you to know that he is in control. I don't care where you're watching from. I don't care. You may be like, oh, I'm not even following Jesus. Well, there were people on Paul's boat that had no idea who God was. And he said, I'm going to give them to you as well. Because you got somebody in your boat that is trusting in God. Faith will. You got to have faith in the middle of a storm. It says this in Luke 12, 25, Jesus said, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? He didn't say like, there's a storm. You know what? Now it's okay to worry. He said, no, no, no. There's, there's a storm. Life is good. Life is bad. You can't do anything to change what you're going through by worrying. The enemy wants you to worry because worry takes your eyes off Jesus. They come all worried. We're going to drown. And Jesus is like, bro, I told y'all we're going to go to the other side. I think Jesus questioned them in the story in Mark four, because I think he needed to hear them say, wait a second. Yeah, that is what I, why did I say that? Because sometimes I got to be reminded that, whoa, 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 hold up. What am I doing? No, I'm a man of faith. I'm going to stand here. I'm going to declare God's goodness, his mercy. His, but sometimes you got to stir yourself up in the middle of the storm. I think Jesus went to him that way. Now, wh worrying, I get it. I love, I love what Jesus told. He told the storm. He said, peace be still. So before Jesus did a miracle, before he did anything, he spoke peace, still, quiet. You ever heard Psalms 46, 10? It says, be still and know that I am God. Oh, we've heard that scripture verse. It's easy, like be still, kumbaya, grab my cup of coffee. Quiet time in the morning, be still and know that I am God. Rewind to the beginning of Psalms 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Be still and know that I am God while everything's crumbling around me is what he says. So Psalms 46, the psalmist didn't write this to you and me. He wrote it to himself. He had to be reminded, God, I, I can't, it's crazy out here, God, but I'm gonna be still and know that you are God. It's real hard to get still in the middle of a storm because the natural reaction is, I gotta do something. I gotta go left, right. What do I do? What do I got? What do I got? And this is what you see these men do in this story. They start trying to figure it all out on their own. But if you want to get it right in the storm, you got to remember that God is in control. So much so that it says in Psalms 89, 9, that he rules the raging of the sea. When its waves rise, he stills them. It doesn't say that he stops the raging sea or he stops the waves from rising. It says when they rise, you have someone in your boat that is stronger than the waves in front of you. I, I got to be still and know that he is God. Remember, God is in control. And then number two, this is the part I'm going to really preach for just a moment, is get rid of your backup plan. Acts 27 and verse 30, it says, in an attempt to escape from the ship, <laughs> stay on the ship, everybody. Look at your neighbor, say, stay on the ship. Stay on the ship. Come on, stay on the ship. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the boat. Then Paul said to the centurion and soldiers, unless these men stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and they let it drift away. To stay on the ship, you have to get rid of your backup plan. You have to get rid of your life, but I want to tell somebody today to cut the rope, cut the rope. Your marriage may be crumbling around you. This is a word for somebody today. You're watching online. Your marriage is crumbling around you. Cut the rope on the backup plan. You do not need another person to please you or make you happy or make your life better. You need to cut the rope and stay on the ship. Your, your world is crumbling all around you. Your health is deteriorating. There is no backup plan of I'm gonna go find a way out. I'm gonna go find a drug that makes me feel. No, I'm telling you to cut the rope. Stay on the ship today. He said, unless these men stay with the ship, you're not gonna be saved. Unless they stay with the ship, unless you stay with the ship, you're not gonna work. And here's what you need to know today is that a faith walk has no plan B. Faith has a plan A and a, fan, a, a plan A only because when faith will, there is no plan B. I, when I started following Jesus, I gave up plan B, everybody. When we moved here to launch this church, I gave up plan B. I'm all in. Whatever God says to do, storms, everything's crazy in life, I have no plan B. I'm all in. God, you're in control. And God honors someone who has no backup plan. Let me step on some toes for just a moment. 
you're watching online, you're here in the room today, you get offended because of something that happened at church and you think, I'm not gonna stay put on this church at this church anymore because I didn't like the way that he preached that at me. Usually when that happens and the preacher's preaching to me, it's something God said, yeah, you need to work on that anyway. And then we wanna bail out because we don't like what God is speaking to us in the moment. Too many of us are calling something God sent our way a storm. And if God sent it, he wants you to experience and he will get you through it. Cut the rope. In 1519, Hernan Cortez arrived in the new world with 600 men and they are trying to overtake the Aztec empire. It took them two years to do it and they did it. They succeeded in their conquest of this new world. But this is how it happened. When they got to the new world, they got off the boats. All the men got off all the little boats and then as soon as they started walking into the new world, because when you start following Jesus, stuff gets a little crazy. We walk by faith, not sight. It means I, I take step one before I can see step two. I don't know what's out there, but I'm trusting God. And while they're walking into the new world, they burned all the ships. They burned all the backup plans. They cut the rope. Because I think if you look back in the story in Mark 4, Jesus did the same thing with the disciples. Why did Jesus not tell them there was a storm? Have you ever thought about this? Jesus is God in the flesh. He knew there was going to be a storm, but if he would have told them there was going to be a storm, they wouldn't have wanted to cross the sea when he told them to cross the sea. They would have said, master, maybe we should wait a day or two. Maybe we should sit this one out. But Jesus, when he wants you to go to the other side, he doesn't care what's in front of you. He's got a plan for you to accomplish. He has called you and chosen you, anointed you, appointed you storms and all storms and all. I got to stay put in the middle of the storm. I got to stay on the ship because it's easy to bail out in the middle of a storm. That's easy. Anybody can do that. It takes no faith to bail out. It takes faith to stay put, stay on the ship. It takes faith to do that because more faith doesn't take away storms. It just helps you stay on the ship in the middle of storms. I got to stay on the ship. I want to tell somebody today, don't go back. Maybe you've been in a season where you're, you're in a dry season spiritually. I'm not experiencing God like I once was. Usually that's on the other end of we stopped moving towards God. What, what did you used to do? Go back to your first love. You don't need anything else. Life was not better in the bar. I'm telling you, life was not better with those people. Life was not better with that drug or that drink or that thing. Life is better with Jesus, even in a storm. Don't go back. Cut the rope today and stay on the ship. Get rid of your backup plan. And then once you do that, you're gonna have to do this immediately when you cut the rope. Otherwise, you're gonna try to jump back after the rope once you cut it. Number three, you got to praise God in the storm. You got to praise God in the storm. Y'all know that, that saying we love to say in church, worship is my weapon, but we don't want to fight nothing. Worship is my weapon, but I, I don't even, I don't even use the weapon. I don't like, like that's just a feel good thing. The, the Bible said no weapon formed against me will prosper. It didn't say no weapon won't be formed against you though. Weapons will be formed. Storms will come. Storms will be formed. That's a part of the journey. But you will stand true and tried and tested in the middle of the storm with Jesus. You will every time. Worship is my weapon. Well, that's when you need it in the prison. Praise in the prison. I love that song we sang on the front end. I'm going to praise him in the prison. People don't do that, do they? They look for a way out of the prison. We're looking to escape the prison. God's like, if you praise me, I'll create the way of escape out of that prison that you're in. It's what he did with Paul and Silas. You see it when they're in prison. If you fast forward in this story, verse 33, just before dawn, Paul urged them all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, you have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from his head. After he said this, he took some bread. He gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and began to eat. And they were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. When you praise God in the middle of the storm, it will encourage you and everybody around you. I look up to the people that praise God in the storm because I sometimes forget that I, I know how to do that. I forget how to use my weapon in the middle of the storm. But you see him say, I need, to, I need you to praise in the middle of this thing. I know it's been 14 days. We still can't see the sun. It's still crazy. The waves are still crazy, but I want you to give thanks to God in the middle of this thing. Why are we giving thanks? Not for what we see, for what we know is coming. Because we have promises all through this book, everybody. There is promises all through this word. If you stay locked into the promises and you thank God for him, he will get you there. You are more than a conqueror when you press forward to conquer. You're not more than a conqueror when you bail out. You're not more than a conqueror when you say, I'm out of this fight, I don't wanna do it anymore. You're more than a conqueror when you press forward in the fight. 
Bishop T.D. Jakes, he says, freedom is a bloody business. You want some freedom, you're going to have to fight for that thing. You're going to have to get after it in the middle of a storm and get scrappy because this is what followers of Jesus do. We get scrappy. The devil's coming. It's all good because by his stripes, I am healed. I've already been healed. He is my provider. My te- you got to exercise the weapon of the word and worship. You have a weapon. And we have way too many Christians that go into battle every day and they don't use the weapons. But the weapons are needed in the fight. They're needed in the storm. I got to have faith in the storm. I got to praise God in the storm. Psalms 42, 11. Why my soul are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God for I will yet praise him, my savior and my God. He's stirring up his own faith. What does a yet praise look like? What does a yet will I praise him praise look like? You ever thought about this? What does a yet pray? Like yet will I praise? I've heard this my whole life. Man, it's easy to come in here on the front row. It's a good Sunday morning, sun shining. I got on my Sunday best. I've, I feel good. Man, it's nice. Oh, come. oh, God, you're so good. But what does a yet praise look like? What does a yet will I praise him look like? That looks like in the lion's den. I know the lions are all around me, but yet will I praise him. I know that I got thrown into the, fir- the fiery furnace, but yet will I praise him? Because even if he doesn't do what he told me, me that I believe he's going to do. He already did more than enough when he saved me. Too many of us have lost the magnificence and awe and wonder of our salvation. And when you remember what Jesus did for you, you will press forward in any storm. You got to praise God in the storm because a yet will I praise him kind of a praise will say, I don't care who's around me. I don't care who's looking. I don't care who's watching. I'm going to get my breakthrough. And if you want a breakthrough, then you have to go through. And when you go through the storm, God will give you a breakthrough. Yet will I praise him. I'm fired up on this thing because I've watched God do it in my life time and time again. And I'm preaching this word today online in the room. I'm standing here before you in the middle of a storm that you'd be like, that's not a storm, but I've got a storm just like you do. And in this church planning journey has been nothing but storm after storm after storm. And I want to tell you something that every step of the way, God has been faithful. He's met every need. The church has grown. God's bringing people to help do do this thing and be a part of it. But it's a yet will I pray. I had many moments where I cried out on my knees to God. What are we going to do next? But I'm going to trust you and let you handle that. And I immediately, y'all heard me talk about it last week. The hand clap of praise will change your life on a Monday morning. I'm just telling you, something happens when you just block everything else out. God, you are so worthy. You are so mighty. God, today you get all of me. You have your way, Jesus. He'll do some crazy, amazing things if you let him. You got to praise God in the storm. It's the key to victory. You let the storm silence your praise, then you're going to let the storm do away with your breakthrough. I got to praise more. There's a storm. I got to lean in more. I got to seek Jesus more. In three weeks, we're going to begin 21 days of prayer and fasting, Sunday, August the 5th. You should take note of that. Get ready for it. Lean in. Fasting, like run? No, I mean like don't eat. 21 days of prayer and fasting. We do this every January and every August. I'm already leaned in. I even had a crazy thought last night. I was walking the dogs and I thought, man, maybe I'll do a 40-day fast. What? 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 I don't know. What? Little John, I don't know. I don't know where that came from. Felt it today, okay? The Spirit of the Lord's moving in me, all right? I I don't know what I need to do, but I know a yet will I praise Him type of a moment will cause me to do things that I've never done before. And if you want to go somewhere you've never been, you're going to have to do some things that you've never done. What would happen if you came in church on a Sunday morning and you said, I'm going to praise like my miracle's coming. I'm going to worship like my miracle's coming. I'm going to sing like my miracle's coming. I'm going to abandon my posture because my miracle is coming. And if you want the breakthrough, you're going to have to praise through somebody. I need God to take me there and praise will do it because he inhabits the praises of his people, not the panic of his people. You got to remember he's in control. You got to praise him in the storm and do all of this. Why? Because I want you to know today that God will get you to your destination. God will get you there. You can't get you there. The minute the storm comes up, you're going to be ready to drop down the lifeboats and leave. But God will get you to your destination. He'll do it by any means necessary. Acts 27, 41, it says, the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow stuck fast and would not move and the stern was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. Maybe you're in a situation or a season where life is falling apart around you. 
I, I, I had so much at one point and I've lost it all. You're holding on to a bunch of broken pieces today. But God can get you there on broken pieces, everybody. He's not the God of what you lost. He is the God of what you have left. And if you trust him with it, he will get you there. I don't know who needs to hear that today. You, he will get you to your destination. What did he say? Jesus told these dudes, we're going to go to the other side. Get in the boat. Let's go to the other side. Then in the middle of the storm, we're going to drown. No, what did I say? Let's go to the other side. In the story with Paul on this ship, the angel of the Lord comes to Paul. You're, you're like, well, Paul, just he was a good Christian and they weren't no Paul had a word from God. This is why every Sunday I tell you to do the first 15. Read your word. Pray and worship every day because you need a word from God. Listen, I come up here and I, and I ask God to give me a word for our church every week. I need, I need a word for our church, God. But I get a word for me first and then I deliver it out of that place of revelation and overflow. You need to take this word and then catch your own word on a Monday morning. You know why? Because when the storm comes on Tuesday, what did God tell you on Monday? I need a word to lean on and stand on. Without this word, man, I will abandon the ship every time. God is in control and he will get you there by any means necessary. I found over the course of our lives following Jesus the last 10 years, usually when I lose something, life is crumbling and falling apart and I got broken pieces left. I end up finding out through the whole process, once God takes me to the other side, that I didn't need what I thought I needed in the first place. If God needed your ship to be together to get you there, he'd have kept it together. If God needed your boat to get to the other side, he'd have let you keep the boat. But God doesn't need you to do anything but trust the word that he gave you. What did he tell you? We're gonna go to the other side. We will stand here and we will look the storm in the, in the face and we'll get to the other side. That's what he said. You got to lean on the last thing that God says. Because after you do that, you'll see verse 43 and 44. It says the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. They wanted to kill Paul. So the centurion ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on other pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. God will get you there on broken pieces, everybody. God, God doesn't need anything to accomplish his plan. His plan, will be, it'll stand true. His word will stand true regardless of what you think or what anybody else does. He's gonna go to the other side. He's saying, come on, I'm gonna take you there. He'll get you there with the broken pieces. Maybe today you're like, all I have left is a little piece of hope. That's enough for God to work with. All you need is a little piece of something. You got to grab on to the broken pieces. And here's why, because storms come and go, but God comes and stays. God comes and stays. And when God's with you, if all you got is a piece of that marriage hanging on, you grab on, you hold on, you hang on, and God will get you to the other side of your storm. I got a dollar left, God. You hang on to that dollar with every ounce of faith that you have. God will get you to the other side. He doesn't need anything to accomplish his purpose other than your faith. Stay on the ship, everybody. Reach out and grab a hold of a piece of hope. There is hope in the darkness. There is hope for the hopeless. If you came in and you're weary, there is rest. If you're dry, God will give you the living water that he supplies that only he can give. But you got to grab a piece. You got to stay on the ship. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to my miracle. This is what I want to ask you to do today right there where you're at. Bow your head, close your eyes. I want you to begin to ask God for yourself. God, where have I started to bail out? Where am I holding on to a lifeboat where you're trying to get me through this storm today? I want you to begin to ask God to show you those things because I don't know about you. This week while I was digging into this, I had to cut some ropes, everybody. I had to cut some ropes. I had to begin to praise him. I don't see it, but I'm gonna give you a yet will I praise him kind of a praise, God. I'm gonna give you all that you are due and God will get us to the other side. Got anybody in this room today that is holding on to one last little piece, I pray that you give them strength as they hang on, oh Jesus. By faith, we're gonna hang on. We're gonna praise you. We're gonna open up our mouths. We're gonna lift our voices. We're gonna dig into the word. We're gonna go forward, God, in our relationship with you. We trust you in the middle of the storm. If you're hanging on by a thread, that's all God needs you to do is just hang on. By faith, hang on.
By faith, stay on the ship. Don't bail out, stay on the ship. You need to strengthen your resolve. Solidify where you stand in your faith journey today. Faith doesn't make the storms go away, but it will help you stay on the ship in the middle of it. And I wanna invite you today to do this with me, to open up your hands right where you're at. Come on, I wanna ask you to stir up your own faith for just a moment. We still got about seven minutes left. Come on, stir up your own faith. God, right now, I just praise you, God. There is a building coming for this church. I don't see how, when, where, but I trust you. I don't know what you're gonna do, God, with our kids and with life down the road and our jobs and our health, but God, we trust you. Yet will I praise you. You have been so good. You've been so mighty. You've been so kind, so merciful. And today we declare your goodness in the land of the living. We are gonna get to the promised land. Come on, stir your faith up for a moment. Come on, get comfortable right there talking to Jesus. God, we love you. God, I'm grabbing a hold of a piece of faith today. I'm grabbing a hold of a piece of hope today, God. All I have left is a little bit of a hope piece, but I'm going to I'm gonna use it. Come on, I got a hallelujah. Let's sing this. Come on. Let's sing this. Come on. Hallelujah. I throw up my hands and praise you again. Come on, praise Him with the last little bit you got left. Come on. All that I have is the hallelujah, hallelujah. I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for King, except for hearts. Whatever broken piece you have left, just hold it up and surrender to God. Today, I give you my broken pieces, Jesus. I ask you to direct our steps, oh God. Order us, God. You're the God of multiplication, exceedingly and abundantly, above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. God, today, some of us are in need of a touch. Listen, if you're in need of a touch from God, we're early today. I did this on purpose. You need to get after it. Praise through for the breakthrough today. What does a yet will I praise him kind of a praise look like? If all you got left is a piece, you can praise him with the piece in your hand. God, today I need you. Today I'm crying out to you, oh God. I want to leave different than I walked in. Transformation on a Sunday morning, I pray today, oh Jesus. Learn how to stir your own self up. Yet will I praise him. God, we love you. Holy Spirit, we need you. We are dependent on you, God. Today, we are here for you, God. We're not here for a church service. We're here to experience the power, the presence of a mighty and a living God. Worship your holy name, oh Jesus. Holy God, we praise you. Woo, I feel this thing. God, we love you today, Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Inhabit the praises of your people in this moment, oh God. We worship you. We magnify you. Come on, begin to just exalt him today. God, we exalt you, Jesus. Oh God, we give you our attention, our focus. Come on, he's a relational God. He's an intimate God. Can you talk to him for a moment? Jesus, I need you. I didn't sign up for a church. I signed up for a, a relationship with you, God, and you led me here so I could encounter you, oh Jesus. 
Come on, let's end with this song real quick. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. And if all we got is voices, let's do it. Mm-mm-mm. God, we exalt you. We magnify you today. Holy God. Come on, lift him up today. Praise him in the storm. Oh, Holy Spirit, have your way. I exalt thee. Come on. Come on, have a relational moment with your God. An intimate relational moment. Oh, God, we're praising you with what we have, God. I exalt Thee. I exalt Thee. Oh, we exalt, we exalt. Come on, love on and for a Greatly to be praised, oh God. I exalt you. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Mighty God. I exalt you. Come on, can we just give him the best praise that we can here this morning? Come on, praise him like he's done it. Praise him like he's going to get you to the other side. Praise him like he's strengthening your faith. Come on, praise him like he's going to give you some hope, like he's going to strengthen your marriage and your body and your finances and your family. Yet will I praise you, oh Jesus. Mighty God, you're worthy. Oh, we love you, Jesus. You can stay standing for just a moment. Heads bowed, eyes closed. God, today... God, I pray for anybody that has a peace left that you give them strength as they hang on. God, we're, we're making the decision to trust you, to follow you. And as we do that, strengthen us, God. Your word says that you will supply every need. So today we are committed to giving you control. God, we're getting rid of the backup plans. We're praising you today, God. And we know that you will do what your word said you would do. So today, strengthen that for each of us. God, anybody in a dry, weary place today, I pray that today something has been sparked. Something has shifted. Matter of fact, while I'm praying, God, it is shifting right now. I feel this thing. Oh God, I pray that you move in somebody's life. Holy Spirit, I pray that you have your way in us today, oh God. Oh, we need you, Jesus. We can't do Monday without you. We can't do Tuesday without you, God. We need you today. We trust you. We're declaring our faith in you. Faith will. If you came in this room today and you've never put your faith in Jesus, you're watching online, that is the next step. Before you can ever worry about trying to get through a storm, you need to get Jesus in your boat with you to start with. And I wanna ask you to make this decision today. If you have never said a prayer asking Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, just do that today. I'm just, I'm just asking, I'm begging you to do that today. All it's gonna do is change your life. You're never losing an exchange with God. If you, if you at some point did this, and maybe you wandered away from, for some time, you haven't been in church, you have had no relationship with God, it's as simple as come home. He's waiting for you, he's ready. All I need you to do is say a prayer with me, something like this. Say, Jesus, today I give you my heart. I give you my life. And I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth, you are Savior. God, you're my Lord. I surrender all today, Jesus. Have your way, oh God. I'm going to live for you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name, everybody said amen. Amen. Come on, can we celebrate anybody that said that prayer today? Come on, celebrate that. That's amazing. I love that. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, before we leave, I want you to do something. If you just said a prayer 
asking Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, you just recommitted your life to God. Watching online, you could do the same thing. Pull out that Connect card that you got right there when you came in the door. I want you to fill that out for us. We wanna help you with next steps and grow in your relationship with God. Online, you could do the same thing. If you text the word connect to the number you'll see on your screen right there, that'll send you one link through text and it'll only be one link. We won't spam text you, but we need to know of your decision today so that we can come alongside you and pass you through this journey. Because again, we're gonna face storms but let's do it together. It's a lot easier to do it together than it is when you're on your own. So let us know of your decision today. Uh, if it's your first time here in the room or watching online, let us know that. That'll help us be able to connect with you further and get you plugged into community so that you'll experience some life change today. We wanna help you with that. So fill out that card in the room. You could drop it uh, with the ushers on the way out when you leave. Online, we'll get that and we'll send you an email back saying thank you and get you connected, okay? Listen, if you came in here today and you just need God to do something in your life, you're facing a storm, I wanna encourage you to come down front, visit with these ladies, our prayer team. We'll have them up here that you can uh, come stand in agreement with somebody. The Bible says where two or more are gathered, he's there. And some of us just need somebody to stand in agreement with us and we need to catch a hold of somebody else's faith. So I wanna encourage you to do that today as we leave. Uh, before we leave, we're gonna worship God with our giving on our way out today. If you came prepared to do that, you can get that ready, drop it on the containers on the way out. If you give online, you could do that, troveheights.com slash give, text to give. Thank you for the way that you do give. Thank you for the way that you give if you're a part of this family. It's amazing what God is doing. If you're new here, this is your first time, feel no pressure to give. The service is our gift to you. We hope you experience God in a powerful way. And if it's your first time around in a minute, if it's your first time here at all, come back next week, come get plugged in. We believe as you do that, God will transform your life. Let's worship with our giving as we leave today. Come down front for prayer. Stick around. Give him a yet will I praise you kind of a moment. If you're in a storm, hey, if you're just grateful you came out of a storm, let's give him what he's due to close here today. Come on, let's lift our hands. Let's lift our voices. God, we love you today, Jesus. Today we worship you with our giving. We give you back what's already yours. Thank you for providing. Bless our church. Bless our lives. Today I pray that your peace goes before us. You got us. Give us all that we need, God, to conquer every storm in front of us. And we give you the the glory, the honor, the praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Come on, let's worship together. Let's go. I know it's not much, but I've nothing else to for King, except for heart singing. Worthy of every breath you breathe. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Jesus. We're going to continue to pray up here. We can see people still praying, so we're going to continue to stay reverent in this moment. But for those of you still in the room, you may dis be dismissed. We're going to keep playing, but y'all can be dismissed. And we can't wait to see you back next Sunday, same time. Y'all have a blessed and a great week.